Good evening, everyone. James Hancock here. I'm back to review episode eight of season two of The Orville, the first of a two-part episode called I. Identity. Now, earlier this week, Seth MacFarlane had been teasing on Twitter that director John Cassar and writers Brandon Braga and Andre Bormanis had something big in store for us this week. And he wasn't kidding around. Not only did this story present a massive change to the status quo for the crew of the Orville, but years from now, hardcore fans of the show are going to look back at this moment as the point where Seth MacFarlane and his team decided to seriously up their game when it comes to the show and turn an already wildly entertaining show into something even greater. If you've been following my videos on this show, you know I'm a massive fan, and I am a little prone to hyperbole, both with the things that I love as well as with the things that I hate. But this episode was a real game changer. I feel like this episode could have easily been used as a brilliant season two cliffhanger, although with no official green light for season three yet, I'm thrilled that we're only going to have to wait a week to see this story's conclusion. This sounds ridiculous now, but I was actually a little worried before doing this video that this was going to be a slow news week when it comes to reviewing the Orville. There were some rumors based on an Instagram post by Jessica Zor that we might see a guest appearance by Halston Sage down the road, something I would welcome, but we'll talk about this if and when that ever takes place. But getting back to this episode, I might still be a little high from the experience overall, but this two-parter could prove as pivotal to the Orville as the season three finale and season four premiere of Star Trek The Next Generation, aka the best of both worlds, when Picard became part of the Borg. Shows always have to evolve and grow, or they inevitably shrivel up and die, but what was amazing about tonight's episode is how it managed to hang on to the classic Orville style of humor and its love of music, all while seriously up in the ante when it comes to drama and excitement. McFarlane is not trying to copy the best of both worlds, but he clearly was inspired by it, and the Kalon have suddenly emerged as a threat that is definitely the Orville's own equivalent of the Borg. Before I get too far ahead of myself, perhaps I should summarize the plot before ranting and raving about all the specific moments that I loved. But this is basically the synopsis. When Isaac suddenly deactivates, the crew of the Orville, especially Dr. Finn and her boys Ty and Marcus, are absolutely horrified, and they decide to take his body home to Kalon 1, a planet of artificial life forms that's still deciding whether or not to join the Union. Once they arrive, they learn that Isaac's fact-finding mission is over and that they now have all the information that they need, therefore Isaac's parts will be reassimilated back into their society for better use. The Kalon seem dubious about what they would possibly gain from joining the Union, given Earth's history of violence, but Ed and Kelly make a pretty strong case. But right from the word go, the planet seems incredibly hostile due to the ominous red eyes of the citizens as opposed to the traditional blue that Isaac has. And it's incredible just how expressive those eyes manage to be, both on Isaac as well as the rest of the Kalons. In any event, the Kalons Kalons take Isaac away, open up his head, they go inside, they do a little tinkering inside of his head, which is kind of suspicious, but when he's reactivated, he says that he's leaving the Orville, something that Dr. Fenn tries her best to understand, although she's really hurt. Her son Ty, however, is completely shattered. When Ty goes looking for Isaac, he uncovers this massive secret behind Kalon society that vastly exceeds any atrocity the Earth has ever committed. The Kalons committed complete and total genocide on the race that invented them, and they left their bones in this giant network of caves across the planet. With their secret out, the Kalons board the Orville, and they start preparing a full-blown invasion of Earth. Now, for a show that's more often concerned with quiet moments like singing karaoke or flirting with crew members in the bar, I was blown away by how well the show pulled off what amounts to a dramatic departure from anything that has come before. The Krill might be a threat from time to time, but as Kelly says in the teaser for the next episode, this completely represents the 25th hour for Earth. But with all that said, let's talk a little bit about the highlights that made this game-changing episode work so well. First and foremost, the humor was still on point, and a scene that now seems very ominous in hindsight. The episode opens with Isaac playing a game with Ty and Marcus, and he keeps beating him, and he explains that his intelligence vastly exceeds their own. When they tell him that he's being rude and what he said isn't nice, Isaac tells him that's irrelevant. I absolutely laughed like hell, but when I revisit this episode, I'm sure I'll see that scene in a slightly different light. This episode actually had a ton of laughs throughout, in spite of the apocalyptic ending. And the fact that the humor only enhances the plot as opposed to distracting from the plot is further evidence of what a magical tightrope walk McFarlane has pulled off in both establishing and maintaining the style and tone of this universe. Secondly, this episode had nothing but heart. Seeing Ty talking to Isaac's inert body when he thinks he might be dead was heartbreaking. But even more moving is Ty's reaction when he sees that Isaac has casually discarded a picture that Ty drew of Isaac spending time with their family. The emotions of this show and the bonds between the characters are what always keep me coming back. A perfect example is when Malloy breaks into song at Isaac's goodbye party. I was grinning from ear to ear like the world's most sentimental idiot, practically crying. And these are emotions that I almost never feel watching any other show or movie. Just little moments like Bordas telling Tala that he wants a piece of the cake from the corner with a flower on it. All these little details are small taken by themselves, but when you put them all together, it just makes the show overall so incredibly heartwarming. 
But most important of all, this episode pulled off the serious drama and thrills when it needed to. Ed is a pretty badass hero moment when he decides to withdraw the official invitation by the Union for the Kalons to join them. He tries to warn his crew, but in the subsequent boarding scene, we get this great battle scene that was lovably clunky in the best tradition of Star Trek. When I watch Star Trek, I don't expect killer fight choreography. I crave the semi-awkward phaser battles with folks standing around falling over when they get hit. And this battle felt amazingly retro without slipping into parody. I particularly like the appearance of the Kalons in combat. As we soon learn, the Kalon population, they're ready to expand beyond their own planet, and they've decided that humanity is not worth hanging on to. That was actually the main purpose of Isaac's mission, whether Isaac was aware of that or not. And then what we get is the sight of the Orville leading a fleet of Kalon ships into space. It was so incredibly epic. I was basically drooling in anticipation for next week's episode. The Orville nearly always wraps up their stories in a single episode, but with this episode, we have a rare chance to speculate about what is to come. I'm a little bewildered as to why all the Kalons are bipedal and humanoid in appearance. You'd think that they would come in all shapes and sizes, including ships for the upcoming invasion, but perhaps we'll learn a little bit more about their functionality next episode. But the big question is whether or not Isaac is in full control of his faculties. I suspect he was deactivated out of fear that he would not be loyal to his planet's goals. His experiences with Dr. Finn have changed him in fundamental ways forever. But what the Kalons didn't anticipate is that the Orville would bring his body to them. So once they had a chance to go inside his head, they actually had an opportunity to convert him over to their side, as well as getting a lot of secrets about humanity and the Union. And because I love the character of Isaac so much, I just refuse to believe that he has switched over and that the bad guys have actually kind of put the whammy on him. I suspect he'll break free of their influence in the next episode and save the day, but we'll have to wait and see. In any event, I continue to be blown away by the creativity and ambition of Seth MacFarlane and his collaborators. These days, we have so many interchangeable shows that are designed to be binged and forgotten, and they feel totally, utterly disposable. But with each episode of The Orville, you can tell that these storytellers and actors are putting their hearts and souls into trying to make a show that will be remembered fondly for many years to come. With a few more episodes like this, I imagine people will start having a lot of conversations about enshrining The Orville as a genuine modern-day classic, like so many other great sci-fi shows that have preceded it. Personally, I'm already there, but with a few more episodes like this, I think the case will be undeniable. But that's all I got for this week. If you want to talk more about the show, and I'm eager to talk about the show, definitely hunt me down on Twitter, at Colbrax. There's a link in the description below. I'm there day or night, and, and we can rant and rave about sci-fi, the Orville, Star Trek, whatever. In the future, what I'm thinking about doing with some of these shows, especially after a big episode, I'm considering making a little switch with the channel and doing some live streams after episodes in order to have conversations with my fellow fans. But that's something I'm playing with that you might be seeing in the near future on this channel. But if you like like this review, please consider subscribing to my channel. It's very helpful to me. But I can't thank you enough for watching the video. I'm really looking forward to talking about next week's episode. But until then, as always, onwards and upwards.